What will it take to make our power grid greener and more sustainable? It's a big question. The president is hailing the jobs a green revolution would create, and a big part of that may be harnessing the power of the sun. Solar power isn't new, but it also isn't booming just yet in a way that it can be a game changer. In this week's It's Not Too Late, Ginger Z looks at how that's changing one panel and one home at a time. I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. Can we take a moment and talk about that thing? Yeah, the sun and solar power. We've had the technology to do solar for 70 some years, and we've known that the sun is pretty powerful for thousands. So why don't we see solar panels on every house? And why is our grid only 3% powered by solar? The cost of putting those solar panels on your house has gone down 70% in just the last decade. And the cost in the future is going to be cut in half by 2030. The solar industry in the U.S. has plans to grow too. In 2020 alone, just over 230,000 people worked in solar. But according to the National Solar Jobs Census, that number will need to exceed 900,000 workers by 2035 to reach that 100% clean electric goal set by President Biden. And get this, if we put solar panels on just 22,000 square miles, which is about the size of Lake Michigan, that would be enough electricity to power the United States. Just this week, the Biden administration approved a solar farm that could power 90,000 homes in California. 100% carbon pollution free electric sector by 2035. And it appears that goal is possible to achieve. Okay, so the technology has been around for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. That's what blows my mind. Like, why? Why has it taken this long? This is Deren Kukusuk a researcher working at the Rutgers Center for Green Building. His most recent project focused on why people choose to go solar. The other thing people like baseline say is, well, I live too far north. That's not necessarily something that excludes you from solar. Absolutely not. We, we've seen really aggressive policies in Massachusetts, for instance, and Connecticut. Part of my research was on trying to figure out what drives the higher adoption rate for mm -hmm. the solar panels in, in residential house, in residential buildings. And top two things is how much sun you get mm -hmm. and what's your electricity bill. Residential solar panels, on average, cost between 10 and 25,000, depending on where you live and your energy needs. There is currently a 26% federal rebate and each state has different incentives. It depends on your electricity bill, and also it depends on the space you, are, you have available on your right. rooftop. Uh, but these systems typically pay themselves in seven, eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. You can own the solar panels, but you can also finance them and even lease them. And, and what is community solar? Describe that for anybody who might not know. Community solar is basically you do not um, have to have the solar panels on your rooftop. And there's, a, let's imagine, a solar farm. Mm -hmm. and you can either purchase solar panels in that solar farm or you can, it's like a subscription system, mm -hmm. pay for that and still receive the benefits. That's what made the most sense for Robert McHugh. He retired last year and he's been loving the savings. My cumulative kilowatt hours are zero and then once the sun comes up in March, these are all negative numbers, which means I'm getting back. Like most people, Bob had a ton of questions before diving into solar. There's snow on top of the panels. Whether in the winter, you know, there's all this fear that, oh, then you're not go you're going to be without electricity. None of which was true. So yeah. you're always on the grid. You just get the credit for the solar that you Correct. make. Correct, yeah. I think that's one thing that people don't know or don't realize is the case. Some yeah, we're, we're not divorced from, right. from that grid at all. Yeah, and you still have the backup. It's still your buddy. Yeah, we yeah. always have electricity. Yes, and that line runs seamlessly, and no one has ever seen it. And then it goes Our right into right that into box. that box. Yep. And that's how it gets connected to the grid. In New Jersey alone, pre-pandemic, there were more than 300 companies that install solar panels. This one right here, there's a 350 watt panel. Phoenix Energy was the one that worked on Bob's. Solar has actually been around for over 100 years at this point, and if you want to wait another five years and kind of hope that there's some massive advancement, you're just gonna keep paying, you know, um, the utility company at a higher rate, you're gonna keep paying for your delivery charges. Um, you're gonna 
you know, be leaving a, a larger carbon footprint. Each state is different. The cost of energy is highest in states like Massachusetts, Connecticut, and California. Not only is the cost different, but the rules are different. Here in New Jersey, the energy that you make with your solar panels goes back to the grid. Then you get the credit. That also happens in Nevada. Property brother Jonathan Scott made a whole documentary about it. I was putting solar in my home and I got the system installed and then I was met with so much frustration from the utility that they would not just flip the switch and let me start using my solar. The doc takes a deep dive into the policies that'll be needed to expand solar power across the U.S. Why do we not have a federal policy that makes it so the incentives are the same for everybody, the, techno the access to the technology is equitable. But as a consumer, knowing that I can see potentially environmental freedom coming with financial freedom, I still am not sure, is this the right time? It's so confusing to even apply for some of these credits and these incentives that no wonder a lot of people don't. Let's make it easy. We know that we have the technology, we could lead the world and, and, and truly show everybody how it's done. And I feel like that's, that's something we should be doing. We have everything, all the means to be able to do it. And the only reason it's not happening is because of the misinformation. Overall, he says everybody should have the option to go solar. The sun does not sign exclusivity deals. So the sun is there for everybody. So let's find a way that we can make sure that we're working together. This is where the jobs are. This is where the strong economy is gonna be. And this is what is going to make it so it is healthier for our families. So the moral of this story is do your research. If you check it out, you might be surprised with some of the changes or things that you thought were true that aren't anymore. I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. Ginger Z breaking down what a solar powered future looks like. Our thanks to you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.